Imagine now if in one of these expeditions to Mars we were to find a chimpanzee-like creature. We would be extremely interested in studying it. Think about it for a minute. I mean, we go and explore. We, we send um, exploration expeditions to Mars. And we are extremely excited when there is a hint that there is water in Mars. Because that means that life could evolve. Imagine now if in one of these expeditions to Mars we were to find a chimpanzee-like creature. We would be extremely interested in studying it. And uh, one of the main questions I dare to say that people would ask is, is it intelligent? So guess what? You don't need to go to Mars. We have them here, and we can study how uh, a creature that is closely related to us can uh, solve problems, what kind of cognition it has. Well, a human is a, is a primate, he's a great ape, uh, and he's a great ape that has evolved an ability to, uh, to relate uh, with others at the psychological level to extend that so far we have not shown in other primates. If you're interested about human nature, knowing about our closest living relatives is very important. Because if you want to know what is something that makes us special, uh, you need to know what others are doing, other species. Because if those other species are also doing those things, well, that is not the distinguishing feature of humans. If I had to summarize in general what is something that is surprising is their creativity. They will come up with solutions that we, we didn't even think about those solutions. We didn't think about that those solutions were possible for them. And they just produce a new solution to a problem that we pose them. We hope this is the way they are going to solve it, and they come up with a new way. And that is, I think, very exciting. People living in cities, complete strangers, riding you know, the subway, complete strangers, and coexisting peacefully. I mean, this is something that I'm, I am not sure that, say, 50,000 years ago, humans could have done without just and not have any problem with it. I don't know. To be, to, be, uh, to be in the same rooms, I'd say. You know, be able to be in the same place with complete strangers and not be afraid. Uh, if you go by what, say, chimpanzees, um, the neighbors are, um, are, and these are not strangers, they know them, but they, they, are, they are territorial and they are not in friendly terms with, with them. Uh, so from this point of view, uh, we are, um, it's amazing to see the kinds of things that we would do, that we can do with strangers. What, what role do communication play? I think it's, uh, communication is very important. I mean, one thing that communication, language in particular, has done for us is that um, we are able to make public our inner thoughts. Language does that for us and I think that's very important because then it opens up a number of possibilities for um, working together. I can tell you what I am intending to do tomorrow and therefore you can coordinate that behavior. I think that apes can take into account what will happen tomorrow but they don't talk about it and that is a crucial I think difference. If you already look at, you know, how, what are the kinds of things that we are doing today compared to the kinds of things that we were doing 20,000 years ago, which in terms of evolutionary time is nothing, it's yesterday. Uh, somebody, let's say, if you, let me do it in a different way. If you were to ask me, if, you, if we could have had this conversation 20,000 years ago, I would not have been able to predict the kind of organizations that we see today in our societies. I mean, with what we had back then, what we presume we had back then, because much is about indirect, indirect evidence. So it's very hard to predict where, where we will go. I think the, our, our capacity for flexibility, it, it's amazing. And, and uh, we keep doing things that we thought they were not possible. And uh, we keep uh, inventing new things, yeah.